This is my deadlift and accessories and cardio day. Uh, it is actually a deload day for me, so I'm gonna have to uh, work on uh, my technique and form at a lower weight, which is highly unpleasant for me because I love lifting heavy weight and getting the buzz uh, in your head that kind of goes with the uh, the endorphin release and all that with it, which I'm gonna have to forego today in favor of technique. I do this every fourth week now um, <clears throat> in, in an effort to make sure that I recover um, as my deadlifts are getting pretty heavy relative to my body weight. Sometimes it's good to, to deload and make sure that your uh, technique is safe um, for those heavy weights. That's the name of the game today. It's real unpleasant, but it's got to be done. All right, guys, I'm running a five-day split right now, four of them being bodybuilding days, and this the fifth day being my deadlift cardio and accessories day. I do deadlifts to the point where they're pretty much their own full workout, and I just sort of add in some other stuff. Um, warmed up with 135, 185 sets of five, and then I'm doing five sets of five at 225, which to me is a fairly lightweight, maybe 60% on my one rep max. Um, mainly focusing on technique because this is my deload week. So this time the technique I'm trying to work on is the fact that I've used the same alternating grip always while developing all the way up to my max. So I'm, during these lighter weights, I've been uh, using the, a reverse version of that grip so that I uh, don't put too much strain on the bicep tendon of my right arm, which has been getting kind of a nagging uh, tweak from this mechanical mistake. So I'm uh, trying to fix that. So using the other grip actually is challenging for pretty much my whole body to adapt to. So I um, went ahead and just ran sets of the deadlift. Pretty much felt like cardio because the weight's not too heavy. Um, but it did feel good to really get an opportunity to focus on that form and to give my biceps tendon on my right arm a week uh, to recover from the heavy weight. Uh, then we did some sled pushes, uh, 50 feet, 300 pounds, and these killed me so bad. My quads were just exploding. I should probably have my toes in next time. I've laid out involuntarily for a little while after them. Uh, then when we did some uh, seated calf raises. The seated calf raises, I usually just like to rep out, stack up a lot of weight on there. Um, I do three sets of these a week with the rest pause at the end, and I do three sets of uh, a gastrocnemius version of it on leg day, usually something like standing calf raise or calf press or something where you, your knee is not bent. Um, then I did, uh, every week I do two abs exercises, and I do hanging leg raises on chest day, and then I do either these or planks, and I rotate each week, which one? Um, just to make sure that I have the ability to plank well and that I have the ability to do this range of motion even though I think this is one of the stupidest exercises there is and I don't feel like it does anything. It takes so many reps before I feel anything in my abs and it's obviously not the best position for your lower back to be in. Next time I do these I probably won't go up as far because looking at my uh, current form it just seems like I'm taking tension off my abs and resting at the top which is meaning I'm having to do 10 extra reps for no reason. But yeah, these are not even good for you, but I do them every other week just to make sure that I know how and to get a good stretch in that area by using the stability ball. I would definitely not recommend doing these against a hard surface like the floor. And when you, if you do these with the ball, make sure you're leaning back as far as you can so that you get a good stretch um, in terms of how far, uh, you know, not to be sitting on the front of the ball, but sitting all the way back on the ball so that you can get that full range of motion. Next up, um, we've got the rotator cuff exercises I do, which I do. Most people do these like as a warm up on shoulder day, which I think is dangerous. I don't think it's a good idea to to pre exhaust the weakest muscle in your shoulder and then pick up some heavy weight. So I, I, I would do these on a separate day from shoulder day and on a day where I won't be doing direct shoulder exercises the next day. That way I have an opportunity to pretty much sort of work out the rotator cuff and strengthen it and, you know, make it tough. You know, I'll do some Cuban presses too on shoulder day to give it a little extra double workout to, you know, you train it twice a week, it's going to respond really well by getting stronger. And my rotator cuffs do feel really strong. I don't really get so many tweaks in them when I, I'm doing shoulder presses anymore uh, because of all this. And that, that will also save you an expensive surgery. It's not going to look cool. No one's going to compliment them, but it'll save you a lot of money in surgery. Um, next up is dumbbell shrugs. Hardest thing about these is deadlifting them up. Um, I usually do like I just take 100 in each hand and run the table because my, for some reason my left traps are just way bigger than my right traps and so I use dumbbells to try and 
kind of kind of balance it out and see if I can uh, straighten it out. But the um, first set I get like 20, and then it drops off like like 16, then I get 13, and it's probably not productive to do them anymore. After that, we finished up with just some hyper extensions. Um, I did I did a 45 pound on this one, and whenever I'm doing a weighted one, I always try to make sure that my chest is really high up and that. Uh, at the top of the motion, that's to protect the lower back, and at the top of the motion, I really squeeze the glutes. That way you're getting the leg involvement that's necessary to make this exercise safe. So that was today's workout. Wound up being pretty tough for a deload day. And stay tuned.